Hi everyone, before I get started here um, with this video about the molecule project, I just did want to give you one little tip. And you probably already know this, so this is probably redundant information. But if you're on a PC or a computer or whatever, you can click on the little gear at the bottom of this video and you can change the speed. You can change it to 1.25 or 1.5, it might be comfortable, and it might save you a little time to watch the video. Um, so just uh, reminding you of that little tip, which again, you probably already know. Anyway, first thing I wanted to do was talk about how to find um, your molecule project and then what to do for your molecule project. So I'm going to try to make this video as quick as possible, but it's unfortunately not going to be super quick, uh, which is why if you want to speed it up, feel free. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get into Blackboard and you'll look here, you can find this uh, final project. and Basically, um, what we have available are the molecule project description and how to find your actual molecule. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find your molecule. And to do that, it's a little counterintuitive. You actually want to click on my grades. Now, I don't have any grades because I'm the instructor, but basically you're going to see molecule project assignment and you're going to see a number. OK, you're going to see a number here and that number is corresponding to your molecule. So if you go to final project and you look at molecule project IUPAC names, there are corresponding numbers 1 through 18. So in your grades, you should have a number 1 through 18 and say it's number 8. Well, this is your molecule. So this is the molecule you're going to want to do all the stuff with. So please make sure that you look up your number and make sure that you do the correct molecule on this list, which again is found at Molecule Project IUPAC Names under Final Project. Once you've found which molecule you have, pretty important, okay, then you can go ahead and go to the Molecule Project Assignment Descriptions. And this gives you an, a descriptions of what you're going to need to do for your molecules. And where you're going to start for the first part and what this video is on is assignment one and assignment two. So essentially you need to make a title page, which needs to have the structural formula of your molecule. You need the expanded structural formula. You need the molar mass calculation and you need to identify the functional groups. So this is your goal for the first thing that's due for the project. So what I want to do is go through how to do some of these things. Now it's really important to note that no hand-drawn structures will be accepted. Part of this project is learning how to use software uh, to draw chemical structures. It's a chemical class. It's 2018. We draw chemical structures on computers, right? When you take a test in a chemistry class, the, the test question has a computer drawn structure. So we have to be able to do these things. So I'm going to walk you through how you might be able to do that. But before we do that, what I want to actually do is what I would start with is do this the old fashioned way. Draw your molecule on a piece of paper. And then once you have your molecule, then we can worry about how do we get that molecule into uh, the chemical software, which I'll show you in a minute. So I have picked a molecule that nobody has. All right, this is our example molecule. This is 3 bromo hept 5 anoic acid. So I need to first draw the structure of this molecule. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out how many carbons are in the base chain. Well, which one of these pieces of information tells me how many carbons are in the base chain? It's this one right here, hept. Hept tells me there's seven carbons in the base chain. Now I'm going to draw the skeletal formula here and we'll go through how to draw the expanded formula and, and whatnot um, in a few minutes on the software. But I want to start with drawing seven carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. Now I know it's a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid groups, oic acids, are always terminal. So pick one side. It doesn't matter which side you pick. For whatever reason, I'm going to pick this side and I'm going to make it into a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid is a double bond O, bond OH. Now it's a carboxylic acid. This also makes this carbon one. Now I'm going to start at the beginning and add everything else. Three bromo. So one, two, three bromo. 5N. EN means alkene, means a double bond. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have a double bond like that. So this is our 
molecule, which is 3-bromo, hept, 5, and oic acid. So the first step is to figure out what your molecule is and use the IUPAC name um, to do so. Once you've figured out what your molecule is, then it's time to go to uh, doing it in the software. So to do this in the software, what you're going to want to do is just go to Google and type in ChemSketch. Or you can use the link that's in the um, Blackboard as well. Um, and then once you get into ChemSketch, you click on it and you hit you go down here and you do download free version so i'm already registered so i could just put my email and password in if you're not registered you have to register yourself for an account and they'll send you an email and you can just click on the link in the email to activate your account and it'll actually bring you to a place where you can download it so you can download chemsketch onto a pc i'm not sure that it works on a mac also you can use chemsketch in um chemistry room 215 I believe which is the cell lab which is on the second uh, floor of the chemistry uh, building just down the hall from the learning center it's on the opposite side of the hall from the learning center CH 242b right before you get to the double doors so if you're coming from the learning center it's on your left hand side right before the double doors and there you can find chemsketch or again you could download it onto your computer and use it there so once you have chemsketch now we actually have to draw this molecule in chemsketch so I'm simply going to open ChemSketch here, and it gives me all this stuff, and I'm just going to ignore that. So this is what ChemSketch looks like, whether you have it on your computer or you have it uh, in the cell lab. It doesn't matter. Um, you can use this here. So this is what we need to do. So what I want to draw is this molecule. Now I'm looking at this molecule on a piece of paper as I'm drawing it here on ChemSketch. So the first thing I notice is that it wants to be seven carbons. Well, for whatever reason, ChemSketch defaults to carbon, probably because it's organic chemists it uses it a lot, and organic chemistry is the study of carbon-based chemistry. So it's defaulting to carbon, but if it wasn't, I would want to click on that. And I want a long carbon chain, so I'm going to click on this because this is the draw chains thing. You could click on this and do one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. I'm just going to undo that. Or you could click on the chain. you got to actually click on it and do seven. So it says there's C7. I let go. I now get a seven carbon chain. Now, if you'll recall, I want to draw at the end um, a carboxylic acid. Well, carboxylic acid contains oxygen. So I'm going to put oxygen like that. I'm going to turn this off from the from the chain because I don't want a chain of oxygens. I'm going to put an oxygen like that, and I'm going to make that one a double bond by just clicking on it again. Okay, so that's basically how I did that. Now I want to make it three bromo. So one, two, three, and I want to add a bromine. So I have bromine here. I put bromine there. Note that if I wanted some element that's not listed here, because this is a selection of common elements in organic chemistry, but if I wanted any element, I could click on the periodic table, and then I could just click on, you know, antimony if I wanted it. So that's basically that. Now I want to make a double bond at the five position. So again, one, two, three, four, five. I want a double bond here. I click on the carbon again, and I just go from this carbon to this carbon, and I just drag across, and I make the double bond. Now, this structure doesn't look that great to me. So what I want to do is I want to click on this, which is the select slash move tool, and I want to select my molecule. And there's two ways to do this. You can click on this button, which is clean structure, or you can go to tools and uh, click on clean structure, or apparently you can also click F9. Now I have a nice clean structure. This is the skeletal formula of my molecule. This is what I'm going to do for my um, title page. So now I open up Word. Okay, you can get Word for, for free if you're a UAlbany student, which I assume if you're watching this video, you are. So now I want to make my title page. So I'm going to call this Organic Chemistry Lab Project. I'm going to put my name on it. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on the selection tool. Grab this, hit Control C, or do Edit Copy, either way. And over here, I'm going to either click on paste or control V, um, whatever you want to do. This is a little small to me, so I'm going to just expand it a little bit bigger. This is a little small to me, so I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I make it bold, whatever you want to do. All right. 
and then basically like that. Now I want to write the name of my molecule. Well, my molecule is 3 bromo hept 5. Whoops, 5. Boy, I'm having a hard time typing because the keyboard's in a weird spot. Anoic acid. And again, that looks a little small to me. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And maybe I put this in the middle of the page. So there I have created my title page and I have drawn my structure using um, chemical software. So that's really important. So the next thing that we need, if we go back over to Blackboard and we look at the molecule project, so that was assignment one, we're done with assignment one. Now we can do assignment two. Well, I need the expanded structural formula. The ex expanded structural formula, I'm not gonna lie to you, is a little bit of a pain in the neck. So um, for the expanded structural formula, here's what we need to do. I'm just gonna set this up so I'm ready to go for next time. I'm gonna go back over to ChemSketch. All right, and I'm gonna, again, use my selection tool, it may already be clicked, and I'm gonna click on this. Now I have to hit Tools, Structure Properties, which is not intuitive. And when it says, we're right here under Common, it says Show Carbons, click All, and then hit Apply. Now the carbons will show on my molecule, and I can go ahead and close that. I then want to make this so the hydrogens are attached as bonds. That's what the expanded structural formula is. So if I um, click on tools again and I put add explicit hydrogens, you'll see that the hydrogens now come out as bonds. Now, if you like that, go with it. If you don't like that, you can do the cleanup again and it'll just make it a slightly different shape, however you wanna do it. Now, the other thing I need to do is I need to add lone pairs. And adding lone pairs is a little bit tricky. It actually took me a little while to figure out how to do it. You have to click on something called templates and open the template window. And when you open the template, template window, you wanna click on Lewis structures, which you can find here. Um, if I can find it, Lewis structures, or you can find here, Lewis structures. Once you've done that, then you can get a lone pair. Now, if you click on that lone pair, it looks kind of giant to me. So you'll notice that this changed from structure to draw. So click it back over to structure, grab that lone pair, and then you'll get an arrow that allows you to resize it. That looks much more appropriate for a lone pair to me. Now I can select that lone pair and hit copy, control C, and then control V, and I can put another lone pair. Control V, I can put another lone pair. Control V, I can put another lone pair. So I can make as many as I want by just simply grabbing this, Control C to copy, Control V, and then I can put the lone pair. Now that I have these lone pairs, I need them to be appropriately um, in, in the appropriate direction. So the first thing I wanna do is click on structure and grab lone pairs that are in the appropriate direction. So I'm gonna put these on the heteroatoms, namely bromine and oxygen in this case. So I'm going to put the one lone pair on bromine, but bromine of course needs three lone pairs. This one is the wrong direction. So one, I, one thing I can do is I can go to, uh, where is it? Somewhere here. All right, so I found my problem. I have to click this back over to draw. And then once it's on draw, I can go to object, rotate 90 degrees. Now it's the right shape. Now, if I want that one again, I can do control C, control V and put the other one here. And then if I want to do that again, control V, put another one here. Control V, put another one here. Now for this oxygen, it's kind of in a weird plane. So here, what you might want to do is grab um, these and actually just rotate it um, manually, um, which can be done by simply clicking on this. So here you'll be able to resize and here you'll be able to rotate these so that they look like they're about in the right plane. And then once you like them, you can just grab another pair and then for the top ones, same thing, grab the ones you want, and maybe we turn them just a little bit like that. We're not gonna be super picky that they line up perfectly, just as long as it kind of looks like that. One thing I do wanna warn you about, um, first of all, I wanna show you if you have extra, you can just highlight them and hit the delete key. 
um, if you do structure cleanup now, the loan pairs can be kind of wonky. So I don't suggest that you clean up the structure and um, after you add the lone pairs because it's going to frustrate you. So clean up the structure first and then add the lone pairs. So now I can copy this molecule, come back over here, my next part of my assignment is the expanded structural formula. I put it there. I can make it a little bit bigger. And I want to label what it is. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. So now I have the expanded structural formula um, of my molecule. I'm going to go back down and do the next part. So for the next part, what I want is the molar mass calculation. Well, it turns out that ChemSketch can help you with this. All right. So if you highlight the molecule and you're on structure, you can go to tools, calculate molecular formula. And then you can put it there. And then you could go to tools, tools, calculate formula weight. And you can put it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use for this one, this molecule. So I'm just going to copy that one. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put molar mass calculation and put my molecule. I should have copied the name too, but I'm going to do it separately in two steps because I like doing it the long way. All right. Actually, because I forgot, obviously. Um, and I'm going to put that there. Now I can put the molar mass and the formula weight by highlighting those. Copy and then paste there. Now, in order to do the calculation part, I want to go into um, the Word document and I want to go to insert equation. And then you just do insert new equation. Okay. In this case, I want to show the um, seven carbons, 11 hydrogens, so on and so forth. So I can put seven moles carbon times, oops, I only need one times, then fraction like this. Okay. 12.01 grams carbon from the periodic table over one mole of carbon and then click over hit equals and uh, seven times 12.01 I think it's 84.07 grams of carbon now I don't want to have to type that all out again so I just copy it control V to paste it now in this case I have 11 moles of hydrogen so I can put that there. The molar mass of hydrogen on the periodic table is 1.01 grams of, in this case, hydrogen per one mole of hydrogen. And what you end up with is 11.11 grams, whoops, of, in this case, hydrogen. And I can repeat that for bromine and for oxygen so that I have all of my calculations. I'll have four of them in total here, and it should add up to about this. Note that this is a few more decimal places. That's not a big deal. That's what the the, the program gave me. Okay, they just use a, a periodic table with more decimal places and the molar masses. Finally, I want to write the functional groups. Now, the good news is you're done with the drawing. If this is your personal computer, I strongly recommend you save this so that you have it available to you if you ever need it again. However, I don't need to redraw it. I'm going to use this one again, and I'm basically going to go and put this here. Now for the functional group one, because of the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to actually take the name and I'm going to put it on the top. So copy, paste, oh, I did it twice, mistake. All right, and now I have this. Now I'm only going to label one functional group, but I do want to show you how to do this. So we here we have an alkene, an alkyl halide, and a carboxylic acid. So I want to, I'm going to do the alkene, but you can do all of them the same way. So first thing I want to do is insert a shape. And I'm going to pick an oval shape, okay? But use the shape you like. And what you notice is, annoyingly, it basically covers what you're trying to do. Well, if you click here on the format, which is what it will default to, um, you can then go to Shape Fill and hit No Fill. If you want the outline to be black, you can change it to black. Um, but you can use whatever options you want. And I made this disappear, so I'm just going to click that so that it doesn't keep disappearing on me. So now I've circled one of my functional groups. 
Now I want to go to the next um, step, which is to label that functional group. So I want to go back and insert a shape. In this case, I want to insert a line, and I'm just going to make that line touch the circle. All right, I'd like it to be black, which I can do like that. So that's basically that. Now I need to actually label this as an alkene. So I go to insert text box. And for whatever reason, on the new version of Excel, you have to, or new version of Word, you have to hit this draw text box option. And then I draw a text box here and I type in alkene. So now I've labeled that as an alkene. Now I don't like this text box to be a box. So if you click on it and on format, you could do shape outline, no outline, and now it's not a box. You also might feel like that's a little bit too small. You can just go ahead and change the font. You can move it around so that it's lined up how you like, so on and so forth. Now I'm not gonna do that for the other two functional groups, but that's essentially what you're gonna do. If you like these to be bold and a little bit bigger, because they're titles, you can do that kind of stuff. Um, I wouldn't try to make them consistent. I haven't spent a lot of time going over those types of details. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, it's designed to give you a basic idea of how to get started on your final project. Please note that we do require, not, they're not optional, um, these uh, formulas, okay, chemical structures, to be drawn using computer software. Now, you're not required to use ChemSketch, but ChemSketch is free. The version I use called ChemDraw is quite expensive, so we're not going to make you buy that. So you can use the free version, which is ChemSketch, and to be honest with you, it works equally as well as the, as the paid version. So I hope you found it helpful, and um, that's the end of the video.